So, I am very excited to announce that the General Science Journal has just published my newest paper, just on October 8th. It just came out. I've been working on it for a long time. It's been about four years since I published the last paper on quantum optics. This one is called The Reconciliation of the Wave-Particle Duality and Formulation of the Photoelectric Equation from the Laws of Capacitance. Now, here's the thing. This paper is based on some of the equations in the last paper about about in, in modeling the photon as a capacitor, but I've come to completely different realizations and conclusions and I'm I'm sorry to say that I was misled in the last paper that I don't believe in the speed of transition anymore. I don't believe it's anything other than the speed of light. And the reason I was misled before is because of an error in the in the equation compounded by the the definition of the the speed of transition that we are using, you know, v sub t or c sub t, as w well, we called it the speed of light times the fine structure constant over two. So I'll explain the error and and how 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 these how these new equations work so much better. They make so much more sense. They make more logical sense. And the beauty about it is they don't introduce any new factor like any new uh constants there's no new constants this is just using the normal constants in the universe there's no new forces there's there's no forces that are needed to to change the speed by a factor of 137 it's all it all just meshes perfectly with with the standard with standard laws in uh the standard view of quantum mechanics and also it meshes perfectly with the Copenhagen interpretation, which I also believe in now. Look up the delayed quantum eraser experiments if you want to see proof that the Copenhagen interpretation is true. So, you know, I, I've I've really changed my views. I've I've thought about this stuff for a long time. There's been so many times where I've you know, I just had to rethink everything. But obviously, these I thought the equations were saying something. It's just a matter of, like, sitting down and figuring out what it's trying to say and what makes sense, what makes logical sense. And here's the new equations that I've I've come to. It's very, they're very similar. They're based off the same plate capacitor equations as the last, as the last paper, but it's so much more beautiful now. So much more beautiful. And here's something I want to show you. Here's a beautiful thing about it. You might think, oh, <laughs> well, this sucks if there's no speed of transition. Well, it doesn't. It's more beautiful now because not only does it agree with all the, the, the current views of physics, but it still reconciles the wave-particle duality. I'll show you what I mean. Here's a here's a website I highly suggest if you're trying to learn about quantum physics or quantum optics. It's uh, the Hyperphysics website put on by the the Georgia State University. You just Google Hyperphysics. It's basically like a free textbook, and they also sell a DVD of it if you want it offline. But they teach pretty much every single subject. So here's the thing: when you when you go to the their page for the, the wave particle duality it says that the photoelectric effect shows the particle properties of light and everything else shows the wave particles of light. Here's a checklist for instance. Look, let's go down the checklist. Reflection can be explained in terms of wave, check. Refraction in terms of wave, check. Interference in terms of wave, check diffraction in terms of wave check polarization in terms of wave photoelectric effect in terms of wave and eh. that's the only thing that can't be explained in terms of wave oh wait what do you think this paper is about it's a, <laughs> it's showing how the photoelectric effect can be explained simply in terms of waves and the voltage of a wave you could you could apply a voltage to a wave because because of uh well my pa my paper explains it all but basically a photon, you know, th this, uh, 
this model right here, figure two, it's a completely inaccurate representation of reality. It just, it's just a model, but it's based on a Newtonian model, and it, it, it's listing the, it's, it's, it's putting the photon as something that has a, a defined history, which it doesn't in quantum mechanics, and it's, it's putting the photon as a point particle that's traveling in a line. Well, the the photon not only does it have a, it doesn't have a defined history, but it doesn't have a defined place. It's essentially smeared out over space, and you can never define it. You can never truly localize it. That's something inherent to to the quantum nature of reality, and you have to model it like that. So a photon actually it, it could be modeled as a plate, and it still has the the negative and positive components of that plate, which. Uh, According to the, the Lorentz transformation in special relativity, a photon does not experience time. Because a photon travels at the speed of light. If you're traveling at the speed of light, there is no time. That's another, that's another feature of reality that you have to deal with. So, in terms of the, in, in, from the experience of the photon, it does not experience time, therefore, it experiences the negative and positive states simultaneously, which introduces a charge differential that's smeared out like plates, so you can model it as a plate, as it has a length of the plate, a width of the plate, and also a distance between the plates, which is half a wavelength. And the air, the air that was, that was in my previous paper, which was like seemingly reconciled by another error was that we listed the the wavelength or we listed the length of the plate as an entire wavelength where if you look at the photon even this though this isn't a perfect model it still model it still demonstrates some of the some of the properties of a photon is that it's negative for half a wavelength and positive for half a wavelength so when you look at the area of a plate capacitor, you don't add the links together. So the length of of the negative plate should be half a wavelength, and the length of the positive plate should be half a wave, wavelength. We didn't do that before, but it was it, it was seemingly corrected by the definition of VT, which was just arbitrarily cho chosen, basically, which was the speed of light times alpha over two. Well, this, I don't need a constant because it explains why, why alpha is introduced because alpha, which is a fine structure constant, is simply the strength of electromagnetic coupling. And when you're solving for the energy of this, of this photon, there's no such thing as a photon in free space, according to the Copenhagen, Copenhagen interpretation. If you can't measure it, it doesn't truly exist. It doesn't. So, you're solving for the energy of the coupled photons. So you have to introduce the strength of electromagnetic coupling on that side of the equation. And then, so, you could divide by that to solve for the, for the, for the, the real energy. And then, you know, when you convert the wavelength and want to put it in terms of frequency, it puts, it puts the speed of light in there. And the, the terms in the brackets equals Planck's constant, which make the whole thing equivalent to e equals hf which is a photoelectric of photoelectric equation but i mean you could just solve for e and have it in terms of wavelength as well but anyway if you're interested in this stuff it, this paper isn't a real heavy read and it it goes over all the history you know and in, in not only this but like i believe this paper truly proves Planck right <laughs> he he was arguing with Einstein a hundred years ago, basically saying that that Einstein was using math. What was he called it a mathematical trick, saying that that the light isn't really quantized or choppy. It's, there's something else going on. That's what Planck truly believes, and this shows that Planck was right all along. You know, they still laugh at him, saying, oh, he, he, he thought, he, he invented this constant, but he didn't even think it was real, huh? He didn't really know nothing. Well, you know what? Y'all motherfuckers don't know nothing, all right? <laughs> so, if you want a good read, this paper is only, it's only like five pages with a couple pages of, uh, 
of citations. <laughs> and, and yeah, I did put, I did put references in this one. So it's actually like in my old paper, I didn't have any references or anything, but this time I actually spent some time and did it right. So I suggest you, you give it a read. Let me know what you think. You know, I want to, I want to hear which, uh, what you guys have to think about these new theories and there's some areas I want to go in the future you know I still have some ideas I want to get back together with Frank Znadarsik even though we don't completely see eye to eye on everything we still see the photon as a capacitor and I think he could really help me out with his electrical engineering expertise because uh there's there's this new model as a photon as a capacitor opens up a lot of doors and I think we're just beginning to understand the relationship between all of these constants, these fundamental constants. And uh, I think I think the path is starting to light up. So anyways, thanks for listening. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Peace.